One of these narrow sections here. I'm hoping I can paddle through most of this. Otherwise, it's going to be some hard walking. This is very boggy. We will find out. Exactly. Working out how I had planned. It's uh, the river's just too narrow. It's too narrow, so I'm gonna try walking it, and we'll just see where we get. I uh, see if we can get close to this lake, and if it's not too far, maybe we'll uh, portage the canoe. But this is a bit of a mess for walking. Here we are. The view from inside the canoe. Quick recommendation for me, never buy a canoe without a yoke, like I did. It is horrible. Either trying to hold it sideways or balance it on your head. Either way, like now, does not make for good times. There we are, proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. That was a miserable portage, and not so much because of the weight of the canoe, but the black flies were horrific in there. I should have got a video of it, but I wasn't going to sit and be tortured I'm trying to get a video of it. It was terrible. And so, well, we bring a bug jacket, I guess. So we are into this little lake, and I don't think we have too much further to go and hopefully we'll find this cabin. All right, just need to turn into this cove here and I think we've got it. So we found it. 
Now the story I was told about this cabin was there was an older French gentleman who was a bit eccentric, he used to live up in a northern logging town close to here. And uh, every year apparently he would build a birch bark canoe from scratch. And he would take it and basically paddle from the rivers close by here north all the way to James Bay, which is hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. Um, and apparently he would paddle those rivers every year was his, uh, his habit. And when he got up there, he would trade his canoe to the local uh, Inuit people and native people that were up there and uh, try to get exchange for money to take a train back here. And that's what he would do every year. And while he was here, um, close somewhat to a town, I mean, we're not real close. Obviously we had to paddle and portage to get here. Um, he built this cabin behind us here. And this cabin is built quite traditionally. Um, I mean, it's chinked with moss, other than a handful of nails, and then use some tar paper and stuff. Uh, the majority of the things in this cabin are traditional. Now, this gentleman apparently has passed away a while ago, so it's been uh, updated a little bit, by, I think, by some local people. Uh, just a couple of youths that maybe come out and party here, but it's a very, very interesting cabin. Apparently, I've talked to the uh, lands department and they were saying that it's built on uh, basically publicly owned land so it was it's an illegal cabin but it's been here because of the construction method of it um, they actually determined it's somewhat of a heritage site so they've decided to leave it here but uh, a very very cool find I'm not gonna lie I may end up coming and spend a couple nights here and do some fishing Back out through this little windy section of river. Oh, just one little more lake to paddle through. And then we're heading home. Well, if you like that adventure, I mean, it is an adventure. You get muddy, you get bug bit, you get tired, you get sore. That's an adventure. You find something neat, consider liking and subscribing. All right, let's just paddle at her home.